Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Renf. I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening today. Let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. We have that freezing advisory warning happening until about 10 a.m. this morning. We're going to have some freezing fog over this weekend as well with a high of 31 and lows into the single digits. Sunday, things might be starting to get a little bit warmer, but let's see how this will affect your uh, outdoor recreational activities. So if we take a look at Whitefish, this is from OnTheSnow.com. You can kind of see that they had snow. 8 inches of snow in the last 72 hours. You can see 22 uh, inches at the base and the uh, 68 at the summit. Um, and this is 11 out of 14 of their slopes are open. That's kind of like a representation if you want to take a quick look. Big sky looks good. Uh, looks like a couple places had some fresh uh, new snow, but looks like most places haven't had any snow in the last 72 hours. And a couple places are still... Uh, not technically open, um, so you may want to uh, call ahead to check to see if uh, how their snow is. But other than that, you can go to onthesnow.com for more information about this. All right, let's talk about some things that are happening in the news because uh, a lot of things are happening in the news. And um, the biggest thing that's happening in Missoula right now is MCPS is looking to sell one of their properties, particularly the property that is the two old buildings, um, which is considered the Homevale buildings, which uh, have been used for Missoula College for uh, many years when uh, Missoula College was College of Technology, College of Technology of the University of Montana, long acronym, and so on and so forth. So they want to have a sticker price of $850,000 to sell this permanently to a private entity. Most of the time, um, uh, public schools have a tendency to have a, a land swap, and what they did with the, in the past is they sold the land to the university for a dollar, knowing that they'd get it back for the same dollar. And right now that they're looking to uh, sell this, first and foremost, and this would hopefully offset any overhead when it comes to their construction of their 2020 uh, bond initiative that was passed a couple years back. The district uh, currently owns several properties and that are mostly unused, including 20 acres of undeveloped land on 55th Street and Whitaker Drive, as well as a five-acre property adjacent to Linda Vista Park. Uh, the school board has no intention of selling unused schools because of the buildings on them, but the buildings near Seno are not useful in providing spaces for classrooms, especially when the 2020 vision for MCPS is achieved. Um, in state news, while national government um, rounds up the 20th day of shutdowns, um, uh, Montana opens theirs with a Medicare expansion bill for the 2019 session. Lawmakers on both sides say that uh, they generally agree on the program should be extended, but Republicans on the other end have, have suggested that they uh, produce some kind of uh, work week or they must do some kind of work. Uh, Steve Daines implemented a pan, uh, uh, a hotline to help uh, some of these folks in Medicaid, uh, help other people in Medicaid um, expand their uh, coverage. Uh, 2015 was the first time Montana worked to get the majority of Montana on some kind of Medicare program. And since then, nearly 100,000 Montanans have been covered by the 2015 Medicaid expansion and by partisan support for continuing and expanding these programs as long as Bullock agrees that people on there are required to do regular drug testing and some kind of employment to be eligible for Medicaid. National news, the big thing that's happening is Trump is not in Washington right now. He's now visiting um, Texas. He is currently, I believe, in San Juan. No, not San Juan, but I believe it's uh, Rio Grande. Sorry about that. Uh, Trump plans uh, to put America into uh, May put into uh, America into a state of emergency because that's one of his last cards he can play in his uh, uh, closing of the government. When House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi and Senator Minority Chuck Schumer went to talk to Trump after uh, the Oval Office address and their uh, counter address as well, Trump asked if Democrats had changed their mind. Democrats said no. Trump got up and left the room. Trump began campaigning for a border wall, which took him to McKellen, Texas, on Thursday for a visit to a border patrol station and a roundtable discussion with local officials before he heads to the Rio Grande, which he must be in right now. Trump said that he has an absolute right to declare a national emergency in order to construct a border wall, but said he prefers to continue efforts to make a deal with Congress. However, he said that if we, do, if we don't make the deal, I think it would be very surprising to me to not declare a state of emergency. So now in its 20th day, 21st uh, roughly, um, and a handful of Republicans voted with Democrats in an effort to reopen the government in the House. Some 80, 800,000 federal workers have been furloughed and are working without paychecks because of the standoff. And today is the uh, 
would be the first day that they're missing their paycheck uh, for working. So that's kind of thing what's happening in the United States right now. And um, if you watch uh, Associated Press like I do religiously, you uh, they also mentioned that um, Trump may be looking into a disaster relief fund for uh, funding the building of the wall. So that's kind of what's happening uh, in the news today. I got some new programs for you guys that are going to be airing on MCAT for the next couple of days. So um, I'm going to have a couple more things to talk about later in the show. But up next, we got pre-critic. But right now, we got some new programs going to be airing on MCAT this weekend. So has the ice sheets melted, the Laurentide and the Cordillerian, and um, an ice free corridor opened up? Clade three grizzly bears spread south, clade four grizzly bears spread north. Now, importantly, clade three grizzly bears never got any further south than central Alberta, southeastern BC. The upshot is that all of the grizzly bears that we once had at mid latitudes on this continent were clade four bears of this most ancient lineage, this first wave of migrants. And they are, have gone extinct everywhere else on Earth except for a small isolate on the Japanese island of Hokkaido. So we have special bears here by virtue of this evolutionary history. <laughs> so the doctor convinces me to give up the TV dream and have my baby in a hospital safely. <laughs> and so when I go into labor, we are driving the hour it takes to get from the reservation to Missoula, and all of a sudden my contractions just go. You know, we started out normal, but all of a sudden they just went insane. And they are five minutes apart. And we get into the hospital, and that nurse gets in there, and she starts checking me. <laughs> and I swear to God, she's going to come up like this and be like, get the car in! She's down the She's down there, she's checking, she comes up and she's like, um, you're only dilated to a one. <laughs> what? And then I puke all over her equipment. But when you're in that state, it's a terrific place to be because you start making connections that you wouldn't have made otherwise. You start seeing patterns that you wouldn't have made otherwise. You're in touch with a more intuitive or emotional part of yourself or part of your brain. So if you, that, you know, I have a friend who says, write with a loose grip, and it's kind of like that. You, you kind of want to be loose enough that you're not constraining yourself, but you kind of have to have a way of control over the material as well. So you aim for that sweet spot where you get into that, that state. Unfortunately, home prices and rents are increasing much more rapidly than many of us can afford. And it's evident that too few of us have housing options and home ownership opportunities that meet their needs. The Missoula Organization of Realtors is an advocate for consumers of housing. We want every Missoulian to have access to home ownership and to housing that they can afford. That's why a little more than a year ago, MOR began planning making Missoula home. We wanted to gain a better understanding of the reasons behind rapidly increasing housing costs and to come up with some potential solutions that the local governments, the private sector, our many nonprofits, and the community as a whole can explore and implement together. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for a little bit of pre-critic. Um, a new movies are coming out this week as well, so I want to make sure that you guys know exactly what movies that you should probably skip. So let's start off with another Kevin Hart movie. This time he's uh, teaming up with Heisenberg in this one about a man who discovers life is not over when you cannot feel from the neck down. Brian Cranston brings a rich white person paraplegic, hires a rough around the edges Kevin Hart who reluctantly accepts a job, and boy, huh, are there learning curves, but there's also heart, Kevin Hart. So. I don't want to skip it. All right, moving on. This movie is basically a dog's purpose, but is the dog doesn't die. It's just kind of like uh, find its way home by actually running home. All right, anyways, Homeward Bound is a dog. Is this 
talking dog, but without CGI to make the mouth move, presents a dog's way home, following the narrative of a dog of who becomes a, who's a stray and gets adopted by a nice young boy and nice looking family. Uh, the boy goes to college, and the dog's like, "Where's my Where's my boy?" And the dog like runs away, chasing a squirrel. Basically, if you watch the trailer to this movie, that is the whole entire movie. It is like they don't even like hide anything from there. It's just like, oh, he the the dog goes on the force. It meets a uh, a horrible CGI mountain lion, and they become friends. Uh, and then he and then the dog, she like goes to the town and is like, "Is that you, dog?" And like, yeah, probably. All right, so that's kind of like the trailer right there. All right. <laughs> Then up next, we got another movie. It's called Perfect Strangers, a movie that you probably never heard of or probably will never see because I don't think it's actually being released here in Missoula, Montana. Uh, comedy is putting down your phones for a second. But this time it's about a group of friends who leave their phones out and hilarity ensues. This seems like it's like a prelude to a horror movie because horror movies and comedies kind of have the same thing where things seem normal and then something goes wrong. That's basically a horror movie. Uh, so they put a, their phones out in front and the whole c concept idea is that th no secrets are being told amongst anybody. So like their mom maybe calls them and, and then they have to put on the speaker and they tell you something embarrassing. It's like, oh, your adult diapers are in. You better go pick them up. And then everyone's like, oh, embarrassing. Another one's just like, all right, I hit the body. I'm like, oh, and then, yeah, the things get kind of whacking crazy. I'm, I don't know. This is uh, very just kind of out there. It's called Perfect Strangers. So, yeah, those are your uh, movies that are coming out this weekend as well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's not that many movies actually coming out in January. It's a pretty dry month, even though Aquaman is uh, basically making all the uh, box office wet. That was terrible. I'll, I'll, I'll stop right now. All right, so let's start with a movie made by the – it's Flagship Friday. Here's a video made by the Flagship Program uh, with the kids at one of the schools here in Missoula.
<laughs> hey, welcome back. I just want to tell you guys that MCAT's going to be live streaming this weekend as well. So if you're interested in seeing any live streams that are coming from MCAT, you can log on to MCAT.org. Um, currently on Local Live, I believe that uh, Ron Scholl, our very own Ron Scholl, is uh, doing uh, Ballet Beyond Borders. So I'm going to... Uh, try to see if we can get some footage because this is a uh, part of the Rocky Mountain Bel A. Um, they sponsor a group of people coming from all around the globe to come down here and basically dance. So as you can see, there's some dancing going on currently and it just ended. Wow, that was uh, perfect timing. So uh, if you want to watch any of that uh, uh, in, in its entirety, it's going to be basically going on all day, and then expect um, two months from now to see it airing on MCAT as well. But I also want to mention that MCAT is uh, doing sports this weekend on Saturday. It's going to be, excuse me, it's going to be uh, Helena High School versus Hellgate High School. It's going to be at Hellgate High School. It's going to be uh, airing on our Facebook page. You can see the link. Oh, my bad. I thought I'd turn that off. But if you click on the link that says high school ports at MCAT.org, it'll bring you to our Facebook page. And then you'll be able to watch the game, which starts at 4.15 tomorrow. And you can't miss it. It's going to be uh, such a wonderful basketball game. All right, let's talk about some city council. One of the big things that are happening within the city council is about a, a lot of plans. It's committee meetings, a lot of work, little things here and there, because it's time for construction season, and they're working on a whole sorts of things. And this is the Pedestrian Facilities Master Plan, or PFMP, if you want to get acronym, uh, develops a strategy for providing a connected, safe, and accessible pedestrian network for all users of all ages and abilities within the Missoula urban area. Um, Jordan Hex talks about the importance of having sidewalks. How do we prioritize projects? How do we select projects? Um, and I will have a dedicated meeting um, on funding. I know staff are working on a variety of, of funding scenarios for how we can um, either leverage other funding sources or change our funding model um, moving forward. So for now, we'll just kind of talk um, about um, the uh, prioritization method, and uh, I'll turn it over to Aaron. Uh, my understanding is that Aaron's got about 15 to 20 minutes of presentation, and um, we'll uh, Break for questions as needed, but I'd like to get through that question, that uh, presentation, and then um, have discussion and questions. All right. So the uh, the big thing that's happening within um, the sidewalks in general is um, it's basically a million dollars for one mile of sidewalk in the side of the city of Missoula. And to know how big the city of Missoula is, they said that uh, an average of 250 miles of sidewalk exist currently in the city of Missoula. And they either have to be maintained, updated, and uh, even expanded in terms of a lot of these um, um, sidewalks as well. But the city of Missoula only has a million dollar budget, which only covers the cost of a mile of sidewalk a year. So that's kind of what's happening there. Aaron Wilson with Transportation Manager uh, talks safety and what Missoula can and can't do with the uh, limited uh, the budget uh, constraints. I'm about um, issues that people experience when they're walking. You know, a recent one was on Russell Street by the YMCA where there was the pedestrian that was hit and luckily did not, was not killed in that crash, but was severely injured. Um, so, you know, we look at those kinds of locations where we know there are a lot of crossings. There's a, there's a bus stop there. Um, there's the YMCA opportunity resources. And so we, the challenge is we don't have a dedicated funding source for those kinds of improvements. Um, and so you're really looking for grant funding, which doesn't always come around. That's what funded Transportation Alternatives, which is a federally funded statewide grant program, funded the Gerald Street project and the Bitterroot Trail. So we can get those funds, but there we're competing statewide for that. Um, so All right, so that's kind of the situation right now is that we're, um, the funding for particular streets, especially ones so close to Highway 93, are under the gaze of uh, under the guise. Sorry about that. Of um, of Montana Department of Transportation, MDT. Um, that was one of the big things is like, um, that's happening in a lot of communities. As they grow, uh, a lot of it within the city, they're in charge of their own infrastructure and everything like that, trying to improve some certain things depending upon public utilities and everything like that. And one of the major things that happens is that county uh, roads and stuff like that are part of the uh, usually 
out in the community are more of Montana Department of Transportation, which is a state, which gets their revenue for, through the federal government. And so as the roads expand and the city uh, annexation gets a little bit bigger, uh, MDT is like, oh, no, it's a city thing. And then the city is like, uh, no, it's actually a Montana Department of Transportation thing. So there's a, there's, there's a miscommunication even after the, any annexation within the city limits that was like, who is in charge of these roads? So first of all, they got to find out wh whose roads they have to improve, like who has, who has to put the money down. And so there's a lot of things happening. Of course, um, if you have something to say, comments will be taken until about 5 p.m. today. Of course, they have a meeting on January 15th, which is the Transportation um, Policy Coordinating Committee, which is also known as the TPCC meeting, which is important when it comes to uh, improving the infrastructure, mountain line, uh, trails, and stuff like that. It's, it's a good uh, meeting to talk about this kind of stuff. So this is a master plan for sidewalks and crosswalks improvement projects, and they're looking for a comment until about 5 p.m. today. So you can go to uh, the website, uh, ci.missoula.mt.us. But let's move on to admin and finance. In admin and finance, Arts Missoula is increasing their fiscal year, 2000, uh, fiscal year budget by 5,150, uh, so for which is going to be going towards a New Zealand trip for um, Missoula's sister city, uh, Palmerston North, New Zealand. So folks from New Zealand, from the same sister city, came down to Missoula for about eight days a week or so uh, to Missoula back in October, and they just kind of have an experience here and just kind of like a trade of cultures and ideas and stuff like that. And Brian Rod Lossberg talks a little bit about the importance of having these kind of programs in place. I think the, the things that strike me the most about um, the opportunity with Palmerston North is we've got a community, I think it's roughly around 80 plus thousand folks, so it's comparable to Missoula in size. It's a university town, and um, I think most importantly, it's a town with a really rich, uh, in a country with a rich indigenous culture. Um, I always mispronounce it, the Maori, I think, is close, hopefully. Um, and those are all things that we share, uh, which I'm assuming sort of goes to why it's a sister city. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that's not coincidental that we share those things. Um, and, and lastly, briefly, I'll, I'll say, uh, uh, you know, I, I participated in an uh, overseas program when I was in college, and um, I've always thought it was the most valuable part of my education. Um, and more importantly than an educational standpoint, it was uh, the single most important experience to help me appreciate uh, everything um, that we have and deal with and wrestle with here in our own country. There's no better way, perhaps, to appreciate um, the opportunities and the challenges that you have at home than to go away from your home and, and see them from another perspective. So, All right, so that was Brian von Lochsberg. Uh The city council uh, approved unanimous, uh, unanimously uh, to put this on a consent agenda, which they'll discuss on Monday. All right, so that was kind of the thing that was happening for Edmund Finance, just a little bit of money to go on a trip to New Zealand. Uh, land use and planning. Uh, in 2024, Linda Vista area plans to end phase two of five-phase project that will create 340 dwelling units on the 2095.52 acre parcel of land, which is in the lower Miller Creek area, of which 123 will be multi-dwelling units, 208 will be a single dwelling residential lots. The Linda Vista estate subdivision in a build-out project that would be at both sides of Lower Miller Creek Road, Upper uh, Miller Creek Road, and south of Jeff Drive in the Linda Vista of Development. So those are some of the areas. There's a lot of development happening there. They just had the Jeanette Rankin School uh, that just opened there recently. It's quite a distance away from Cold Springs School, and it's kind of like within the middle of a lot of residential and future development as well. Gilbert Larson is the project manager, talks about the uh, struggles they faced with uh, developing uh, these areas, which is why they had this special uh, uh, request to ask for the city for an extension for more time. When this was approved, we had every confidence that we wouldn't need to come back, that we could stick to the schedule. There were some differences of opinion on how the 80% was going to be calculated. There were also some problems with market and who was being involved. And we thought we would be here at the 80% build out before today, but we're not. So there's this one condition approval we can't meet, and that's why we just need some additional time. We are very confident we can meet it with this new schedule. However, you heard how many new units need to come on, and we have the ability now 
within our own, within the Twite family's own ownership to control that and to see that those other phases are brought forward and that, that we reach that 80 percent build out. All right. So that's what they're currently at right now. Uh, of course, the meeting, uh, they did a lot. They did a lot of time devoted to construction development and other things. One of the things that they were talking about as well, that they had the uh, engineer from Missoula Water Company uh, come in and talk about uh, some of the challenges and in, uh, initially in water. Uh, <coughs> water systems in place as well because this is a, an expanding area but it's also kind of a little bit further away from within the city limits where they already have existing piping inf infrastructure right there in the first place so the areas, areas have a lot of development for water sewer and whatnot before you can even build a lot of these dwelling units because um, they want to be able to uh, be connected to the city system before they launch the system because it's going to be multi-dwelling and having a, a septic tank would just not cut it with a lot of these units. So this is an extension uh, based on phasing and timing. There will be a series of improvements in an area that requires improvements and a lot of more time as a result. Okay, Mary from Development Services talks about access. Um, that's one of the big things that are happening. They put the roundabout up in the Miller Creek area as well, and they're worried about certain access. Uh, so this is Mary Dalton. You're, you're right. There are lots of ways now, more ways. It's not all one road. There's Christian Drive, but it does lead to the roundabout, and from there to reserve is uh, all the traffic goes through there. Part of this subdivision included um, discussion about increasing for public transportation and a pilot study, and I think that was the intent, is looking at not necessarily the mitigation efforts where the roundabout for vehicular traffic, but trying to encourage some of that traffic to use other transportation um, things like buses and bike riding. So. All right, so there... Uh, there we go. Oh, there, there is the last quote I have for you guys, talking a little bit more about that information as well. One of the biggest challenges in the Lower Miller Creek is the Jeanette Rankin School, like I said before, which Cold Springs is so close to the Meadow Hill School um, in that general area off of uh, reserve, technically, and will now be housed to a new rural location that is in the center of this development, such as this one. Uh, that's just an example of the growth in the Lower Meadow Creek. So this has nothing to really do with the process of all these dwelling units that are going to be built. Uh, so far, the city... Approve, approved of the extension of phase one, um, which is going to be ongoing, which has been ongoing ever since they uh, s um, they said, they was like, we're going to build this. That's phase one. Phase two is them um, finishing the 132 multi-dwelling facility. And then, of course, the single residential will happen as the phases go along. And each phase will happen in succession until phase five is complete in 2027. For more information, you can go on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can find out everything Missoula. You can find your permits. You can find information about this, a little bit of that. Um, in just terms of business, community, how do you get involved with the community-based efforts, um, even getting a job here in the city of Missoula as well? It is a wonderful, wonderful reference as well. But I'm going to throw it to an art clip for you guys. Um, but when I come back, I'm going to be talking all sorts of things about events that are happening in the city of Missoula. So stay with me.
Welcome to another edition of the Montana Department of Transportation's How to Drive a Roundabout. Oversized vehicles and vehicles with trailers may straddle both lanes while driving through a roundabout. Stay a safe distance behind trucks because they will usually use both lanes. Most roundabouts will include a truck apron, a raised section of pavement around the central island that allows them to travel on the roundabout without using both lanes. Trailers should use the truck apron if available. Looking good. Remember, do not crowd these vehicles. Rather, give them the room needed in order to safely drive through the roundabout. Oh no, that's the wrong way. Following these instructions, you'll have no problem navigating the new roundabouts popping up all around Montana. Saturday drop-ins return for their third year of stop animation and media fun. Every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m., your kid can work with Legos, play, and more to make their characters come to life. Animation isn't the only reason to stop in. Hi! Your kids can experience media through editing, voiceover, and short films. Games and activities to keep your kids busy all Saturday afternoon, starting September. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to out-fraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, hmm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> Hey, how, how, hey, how's it going over? Uh, uh, oh, have a good day. <laughs> oh, huh, I didn't see you over there. What a nice day to be out and about today. But I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second. Let me just adjust this. Uh, okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out. Come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you got to do is come on down to our location at 500 North Higgins. It's as easy as that. See you there. Hey, guys. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> now it's time for a little bit of uh, events that are happening within the city of Missoula. If you are interested in finding out more about these events, you can go to Missoula Events. Net. All right, so let's kick things off with a little a couple highlighted things that I want to mention from the website. Indoor garage sale is happening at the King's Christian Church, and this is happening from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and it's also going on tomorrow as well. It also goes on Sunday. Um, so this is uh, toys, desks, some um, tools, kitchen equipment, free Bibles, office supplies, file cabinets, and Christmas decorations. Cash or checks are accepted. And, and that's happening at the King's Christian Church. <coughs> which is located at 9830 Valley Grove Drive on Highway 93, just north of Lolo, Montana. All right, Tiny Tales and Storytime ha happening uh, this morning around 10.30 a.m. at Missoula Public Library. Get your kids involved with reading. It's a good uh, resource at the Missoula Public Library. It's free. Roots, Mismo, and Mi uh, Miz Missoula Indoor Sports Arena are all fun indoor activity-based uh, areas. It costs money to do it, but it's fun to have your kids active during the winter cold time, especially during this freezing fog that's happening. Um, Hands-on science liquid is awesome. Spectrum Discovery Center is enjoy the property of water with the experiment as they experiment with solids, liquids, and gases at the Discovery Bench. And their makerspace is Strawbees, and this is start opens at 11 a.m., and it goes until about 5, 6 p.m. at the Missoula Spectrum, which is located on 812 Tool Avenue. Um, this week, um, in the uh, Missoula Public Library, they're doing yarns and watercolor every Friday. If you want to make some clothes, 
make a hat, make a scarf, yarns is the place to be. But if you just want to do a watercolor, maybe something that can stick on the fridge, all both of them start at noon at the Missoula Public Library. Cribbage and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center around lunchtime. If you're interested in having a little bit of lunch and maybe playing a couple card games, uh, Missoula Senior Center is the place to be. Uh, they do this most days anyway, so you can't miss it. Um, development and Preschool Screening Clinic, this is important because you want to know if your kid who is ages zero, birth to five years of age in the Clinton School District is uh, is being held um, today. And this is basically from one in the afternoon to about four in the afternoon. And this is a great way to have your kid to see if they're uh, ready for school. And this is, uh, you can call uh, 825-3113 to schedule an appointment for your child's screening or receive more information about this. Again, that number is 825-3113. This is a free screening. Um, which includes uh, gross motor, fine motor, speech and language, development concepts, hearing and vision screening. So it's a good resource for that. Um, and if you're a parent who doesn't like the school systems, who likes the idea of a kind of like an educational co-op, Endeavor is the place to go. And this afternoon they have games and Legos and all sorts of things through their school Endeavor. Uh, Teen Writers Group is also happening in the Missoula Public Library later today, this afternoon, uh, this afternoon around 3.30. They have a middle school writer group on Wednesdays, Thursdays, but Teen Writers Group is a good way for uh, young teens to work on their writing skills, especially during a writing contest, which ends on February 15th at the Missoula Public Library. I just wanted to give a shout out to them for that. Winter Retreat to Remember Teen and Young Adults, Tamara Grief, Grief Resource Center. This is a winter retreat to remember, a gateway for teens and young adults at Flathead Lake, and this is happening this weekend. Uh, it's an overnight retreat for teens and young adults to uh, grieving the death of a family member or loved one. Delicious food, fine folks, laughter, and chances to honor and remember amidst the beauty of the season. Alumni invited to attend as peer leaders. You can call 541-8472 to register. And grief, uh, this Tamarack Grief Resource Center, and it starts at 430 tonight. CASA Flying Squirrel Fundraiser. So the CASA of Missoula helps... Uh, uh, advo advocate for children in the legal system, and 50% of all proceeds at the Flying Squirrel tonight will be going to Casa of Missoula. Cool. Uh, Postmodern Real Realities by Jaden Vasquez. Uh, Jewtown Arts Community Center um, is welcoming um, Jaden Vasquez. Uh, Jaden will be filling the main gallery of, with amazing small detailed scenes. Um, who likes to create pa uh, past places uh, they have seen and ravaged and worn houses to tell a story about past residents. They also like to play with some small spaces and what can fit into these tiny toolbox. Postmodern Realities show what will be on display um, Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and it'll go on until the end of the month, I believe. Wasil Clay Club Workshop, the Clay Studio Missoula, is a Western Cider uh, Wasel celebration by creating an old world clay cup using the pitch method. is an informative workshop at the Clay Studio of Missoula. So it's a workshop starting at 6 p.m. tonight. You get to learn a new way to make a cup. Um, Worldwide Cinema, Missoula Public Library is doing a viewing of Bye Bye Germany from Germany. This is a comedy drama is in German with English subtitles. Don't worry about it. And it's going to be at, uh, and it runs 102 minutes long. This is going to be happening uh, at 7 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library in the large meeting room. All right, so those are your Friday events. Let's uh, bre uh, let's uh, uh, let's um, uh, bulldoze through the uh, Saturday events. Of course, if you're interested in doing a little bit of farmers market and you're looking for a nice place to go to hang out and see some things, Missoula Senior Center place to be is the uh, Missoula Valley Winter Market, which starts uh, 8 a.m. at the Missoula Senior Center. First floor, downstairs, thrift shop, all sorts of things. They set up booths and everything. Cheeses, breads, all sorts of things that you could find at the Farmer's Market at the Missoula Senior Center from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Zootown Classic Basketball Tournament. This is... Uh, Anybody who likes, uh, who anybody who has kids who likes doing basketball tournaments and stuff like this, it's going to be uh, featuring teams from all across the state: Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and Washington. Teams of all abilities, new and beginners to advanced. So it's a tournament that's going on starting at 8 a.m. Uh, it's the Zootown Classic Hosts. Grit. It's a high school carpentry workshop. Um, this is a 20-hour carpentry workshop, which is free and open to high school girls and non-binary and gender-diverse students. Participants will gain tangible skills throughout the hours of hands-on practice, work as a team to complete projects and solve problems, build confidence and leadership skills. It's GRIT High School Carpentry Workshop, which is going to be hosted at the Missoula College starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. 
It's going to basically go on all day, and it's uh, over four days of learning. This is a 20-hour uh, carpentry workshop, so it's going to be a whole bunch of stuff sh uh, stuffed into a one weekend. Winter storytelling, Tony um, Incahosa, In Incahola, sorry about that. I'm totally butchering that name. Just ignore me for that part. Um, so he tells the stories that were traditionally told by his ancestors in the lands of Traveler's Rest. As director of the Salish uh, Pendy uh, Cultural Committee, um, Tony oversees operations from the production of books to language works, from uh, achieving oral histories, photos, and songs, to the holding of ceremonial events and wakes uh, in the tribal longhouse. Um, Tony is the first uh, Native American to open a session with, of Congress with prayer, $5 per person, and is free for members. Um, and this is going to be at the Traveler's Rest start, starting tomorrow at 11 a.m. But if you have a kid whose age is 9 to 13 and you just want to have a place for your kid to be, MCAT's the place to be because uh, from a 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday until our summer programs start going into full swing, um, we host a Saturday drop-in for kids who are interested in making movies, short films, stop animation, many different programs to allow them to kind of uh, use creativity. So um, while your kids are staring at the computer for useless things, we teach them to stay at the computer for useful things. All right, so open figure drawing at the ZAC, so Mizzou Art Museum, uh, is collaboration with the Zootown Arts Community Center. It's going to be at the Mizzou Art Museum at 2 p.m. This is 18 plus, since this is a open figure drawing, um, and this is going to be happening uh, tomorrow. It's going to happen the 26th. It's going to. It's basically going to happen the first and third Saturday of the month at 2 p.m. at the Mizzou Art Museum. It's going to offer open figure drawings. Ballet Beyond Borders from. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I just want to give a shout out to them because they're doing all sorts of events happening, workshops and whatnot. But specifically, their gala is going to be happening tomorrow night at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Dennis Theater where you're going to highlight a bunch of the artists and dancers, contemporary and ballet. Um, from all over around the globe who've come down to Missoula to be a part of this. Last year was the first be uh, Ballet Beyond Borders where they had a little struggle with uh, Trump putting a, a tariff on travel. So basically, there was less people being able to come in here for, to perform. This year is a little bit different. So this is a International Stars and uh, Ballet Beyond Border winners will perform in styles ranging from classical ballet to hip hop. And you don't want to miss this event. It's not going to be live streamed, but you'll be able to see it later on on MCAT as well. But you'll be able to see a lot of the competition today at MCAT.org. So just want to give a little shout out to all that stuff. If you're interested in going out and about tonight, they're going to have uh, Keller Williams at the top hat, which is going to be some jam and miscellaneous music. You got VFW is going to be doing some rock music there. Dead Hipster is going to be doing some uh, DJ music. Um, Union Club is going to have Joan Zen. Uh, Joan Zen is a great band that's been playing in Missoula for many years. If you're interested in going out and about on Saturday night, the Dodgy Mountain Men, Men, Dodgy Mountain Men will be playing some bluegrass music. It's like kind of like that regressive rock where they take modern music and then they bluegrass them. And that's kind of what Dodgy Mountain Men's all about. And they'll be playing tomorrow night at the Top Hat. The Shiver will be at the Union Club. Uh, disco Dance Party going to be at Lolo Hot Spring tomorrow night. And also there's going to be some more DJ music at the Ballander. So you can't, you can't go wrong. There's just so much going on this weekend as well. I usually skip Sundays. But if you just to kind of like... Uh, just kind of overview of Sundays, yoga, uh, breweries, some family fun times and story times with the public library and whatnot. But yeah, just a lot of brewery stuff on Sundays. It's kind of it's kind of it's kinda crazy. So, but if you want to find out those events and more, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Cool. All right. Well, see ya. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.